Okay, welcome everybody. Uh, today we're talking about nuclear forces and stability. Um, before we start, I, I just want to take you back to what, what we did in class today, which just at the end of class we, we got everybody together in a group and I tried to show you the, the balance between two forces, between what are called electrostatic forces or coulombic forces, and what they do is um, those are the forces between protons, okay, and the, so you have the protons, are, they're positive and they repel each other and they're, they're packed into this tiny space called the nucleus. And so the, the coulombic forces or electrostatic forces are repulsion forces that exist between those protons and, and they want to, essentially they want to break the nucleus apart. Okay, to, to counter the, the coulombic forces you have what are called strong nuclear forces. And strong nuclear forces occur between nucleons protons and neutrons that are adjacent to each other, that are right next to each other. And, and so the reason that this occurs is, and it has to do with particle physics, but just to give you the, the, the to sum it up, a, a strong nuclear force is a very, very strong force that can only reach 10 to the negative 15 meters. That's, that's about the width of a proton. So you'll only ever get a force of attraction between two nucleons that are right next to each other. If you have a, a uranium nucleus that has 238 protons and neutrons, 238 nucleons in it, the, the attractive forces will only be between nucleons that are right next to each other, but then the electrostatic forces, the ones that repel each other, those exist throughout the entire nucleus. Okay, and so nuclear stability occurs when there's a balance between those two forces. So you have your, your attractive forces from your nu uh, strong nuclear force, and your repulsive forces from your electrostatic forces, they, they cancel each other out. And you get, just like we learned in mechanics, you get what's called equilibrium. And equilibrium, F net equals zero, and, and the nucleus is stable, okay? It's not radioactive. But today what we're doing is we're looking at, at radioactive nuclei. So we're looking at nuclei that are not stable for one reason or another. They're either the strong nuclear forces are too great or the electrostatic forces are too great. And so the, the nucleus makes adjustments. Okay. All right. So let's take a look at this here. Here we have two definitions for the two the two forces that we just went through. And here's a visual to show you from uh, hyperphysics. And in this visual, they show you a contrast between the two forces: the electrostatic forces between the protons that are going out, and then the attractive nuclear forces which are pulling in. And again, if there if there's an imbalance between those forces, then you get one of three types. Of nuclear decay. You get alpha particle decay, you get beta decay, or you get gamma decay. And we'll look at, at reasons for all three shortly. Okay. This is a scarier diagram than, than it looks like. Okay, now this is a diagram that it's it's a graph, okay, and it's a graph that shows two things. Along the, the text is pretty small here, but along the bottom we have the number of, of protons. Okay. So along the x-axis, the number of protons, and along the y-axis, you have the, the number of neutrons. All right? and, and what you have here, there are two straight lines. This, this top line, is, is a slope of, of two. Okay? And what that means is, uh, with this line, there are two neutrons for every one proton. Okay? That's a slope of two. This other line here, this is a slope of one. And, and so that means with this line, there are, there's one neutron for every one proton, okay? And then you have this range with a bunch of dots. And what these dots are, these are stable nuclei. And these are nuclei that have, have a balance between strong nuclear force and electrostatic force. So this range is the range of stable nuclei. And you can see for small nuclei, all right, the, the neutron to proton range is pretty much one to one. And the reason for that is, well, okay, the neutrons, there's no electrostatic force, and you have the protons have an electrostatic force, but there's not that many of them. So you don't need quite as many neutrons. As the nucleus gets bigger, you get more and more protons, and every one of those protons is repelled by every other proton in the nucleus. And so, therefore, you require more neutrons per proton to have a stable nucleus. So for a big nucleus, something like uh, uranium-235 or 238 up here, you need almost one and a half or 1.6 neutrons for every proton that you have, okay? All right, so this is our, our, our band of stability. 
This is the one-to-one -one neutron to proton line, and this is the two-to-one neutron to proton line. Okay, there's two ranges outside of nuclear stability. There's this range over here to the right, in which case you have too many protons and not enough neutrons. So that's called proton rich. Okay, and, and we're going to see soon that if, if a nucleus is proton rich, often what it'll do is it will, it will um, undergo alpha decay. And what happens is it, it, it spits out a particle that has two neutrons and two protons in it. And so that ratio, that neutron to proton ratio, um, increases, excuse me, and, and so it moves it over this way. Over on this side, this is neutron rich. A neutron rich nuclei have essentially too many neutrons. And well, how do you get rid of a neutron? You have what's called a beta decay. That's what we talked about in class today. When you have a neutron spits out a negative particle called a beta particle, which is a high energy electron. And when it spits out that beta particle, you get what's left over is, is a nucleon with a positive charge. If a neutral particle gives up a negative charge, what's left is positive. So you have a nucleon with a positive charge. That's a proton. All right, so you have a, new, a neutron, which is neutral, releases a negative charged particle, a beta particle. And what's left over, what's left in the nucleus now, is a nucleon that's positive, and that's a proton. So you essentially have a, nu a neutron becoming a proton. This is neutron rich, and this, if things are in this range, they often undergo beta decay. Okay? All right, so let's take a look at those decays if you have what's called a decay series. And again, this is a scary diagram, which really isn't that scary. This is the decay series for the isotope uranium-238. Uranium-238 is 238 nucleons, 92 of which are protons. Okay, And so what happens is, each one of these line segments represents a decay. And what happens is, over the course of time, uranium-238 undergoes all of these decays works its way down through the series until it becomes lead uh, 207, excuse me, lead 207, which is a very stable nucleus. It has a good balance of electrostatic, boy, I've got quite a storm out there, electrostatic and strong nuclear forces. Okay, let's take a look at these two lines. You have basically two types. You have these ones that are diagonal, and you have these ones that move straight to the right. The diagonal ones, if you can see them, okay, they every diagonal line you drop four nucleons and you drop two protons. Here's the proton number down here, here's the nucleon number here, and so these diagonal lines drop four nucleons and two protons. And Hopefully that rings a bell. Hopefully two protons and two neutron rings a bell. That's, that's an alpha decay. Alright, so these are proton rich nuclei. They, they have too many protons and so they undergo alpha decay to move them from here back towards this range, okay? These horizontal lines, you can see the nucleon number doesn't change with these ones. The nucleon number stays the same. The same number of particles in the nucleus, but you seem to gain protons. Like if you look at this one, it goes from 82 to 83 to 84. You're mysteriously gaining protons and your, your nucleon number stays the same. Well, that happens with a beta decay, right? So these atoms here are, are neutron-rich. They have too many neutrons, and so they undergo beta decay to move towards that stable region. And so what happens is you get a series of nuclear reactions. Alpha decay, beta, beta decay. Alpha, 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 beta, beta, beta. You, you get the idea. You get a series of decays until you wind up in, let's find it, 82 and 207 is going to be about here. There you go. And there is your stable lead, um, lead 207 nucleus. You're in that nice stable range that you want to be in. Okay. That's de the decay series and, and the balance of nuclear forces in the nucleus. So what I want to do after this is I want to get into what's something called mass defect and binding energy. And that's the really cool stuff. That's the E equals MC squared. But I want to make sure that people are okay with this, they're grounded with it, and, uh, and then we'll start with the next lesson. So be sure, if, if it doesn't make sense, if you're having trouble, make sure you come in and see me.
All right, have yourselves a good night, and we'll talk to you soon.